Good evening, my love and sounded warriors. Welcome to the next session of Work Power Energy with me, Shreyas, your capto. Kaise ho sab log? How is everyone? Welcome, bonjour. Hello, hello, your friend Ishvid, Madhusudan, Sada, Chitra. Hello, Ankit. Welcome. Thank you for all the lovely and colorful hearts. So. Those of you who do not know me, well, I am Shreyas. Uh, people call me Capto Shreyas because I lead you guys the way for your J examination, for your preparation because this examination is not so easy and that's why you need coaching, you need a mentor and I am here because I have, I have been mentoring a lot of kids over the past one decade. Yes, that's right, you heard it right and I am here to do so for you guys for the next two years and welcome to the nurture series so you would have seen the logo out there so that's nurture nurture is for 11th standard kids and uh, it's a long term series running on our we enthuse channel we enthuse is a special channel for all the english medium students or those students who want to learn and prepare for je and like examinations in english and um, you know this is lecture number 4 you will see all the past videos of all the previous chapters out there so you can go ahead and check it out and uh, if you want to know what is the next schedule and the PDF and all the important updates that we guys keep giving you, please check it out on our Telegram group. The link is there in the description box below. Hello, hello, hello. Ankit, if you're not able to solve questions and memorize formulas, I think that's what he asked. Well, you know, the best way to memorize formulas is by solving direct application substitution based questions. Take a formula and try to substitute values okay or try to solve questions which are directly based on substitution number two try to play with the formula try to think what will happen if this is not there what will happen if this increases this decreases so that's the only way you'll remember it and keep coming back to it again and again hello Harshal. hello chinnu hello roshni hello rehan hello hello welcome 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 thank you susana mercy for um, making this or writing this wonderful comment it really makes my day trust me that's the only reason probably i come is hc verma very important for neat examinations harshil yes not many neat physics teachers might suggest you that but i am telling you it helps a lot okay because it will build your concepts else what will happen you will start thinking very very mechanically very very methodically rather than thinking conceptually and you will not appreciate the subject you might not be able to score as many marks as you would by studying through HC Varma. Okay, so uh, 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 Saja says rule number one to uh, watch Tracer's class, please forget whatever you have learned in school. Oops. Okay, I'm not commenting on that. <laughs> All right, my backward videos are running slow. That's a very complicated statement. My backward videos are running. What do you mean by backward videos? You are watching my videos in reverse and that is running slow. Why do you watch my videos on reverse, by the way? All right. Okay, so moment of inertia, that's uh, later on Madhu ready. It's going to come in rotational motion. Right now we are just in, you know, work power energy. We have circular motion, we have center of mass and then we'll come to, mo uh, you know, rotational motion, by the way. Also, let me tell you all the links that are required, like say, for example, you know, over here, you can change your display picture by clicking on this link. This is a cool display picture you can get change it on youtube to show your love and support uh, you also have your cbse term one and two preparation course which is running and you have your 11th standard uh, you know uh, course also running this is the j2 year course all these links are there in the description box with their prices and guess what you don't have to enter any coupon code the coupon code is already entered it's a direct link which will give you that discount so all of this here and last time i had given you guys oh that's me with an amazing pose did you guys love that pose all right so you know a lot of students doing the homework like ispreet saja swarlena harita aishwarya arox a lot of new people and uh, srinivasa chaitanya wanted me to take his name because he uh, feels very honored when somebody like me takes his name. So, Srinivasa Chantana, well, I have taken your name, Bacha. Okay, Anshika and Mohammed, and I'm not sure why your family is not supporting, no coaching. Don't worry, Bacha, we are here on YouTube. Okay, learn from us. Trust me, we'll help you as much as possible. Okay, so keep uh, uh, attending these classes out here. So, thank you guys for posting up. So, it's time 
to start our class i hope you guys are ready let's see some hearts over here i, I want to see some hearts you guys can see your hearts on this um yeah hello good evening good evening good evening uh saja is going to take a selfie well that would be good saja and please tag me on instagram thank you thank you guys for all the hearts okay time to start potential energy all right okay uh, I have, have you done spring? Yes, Nidhi. Last lecture only I did spring potential energy. That was my previous class from which I read all the homework names. Okay, so I've just done it. I can see a lot of my me's over here. Okay, very good. Congratulations for flooding the chat box with hearts. So quick recap what we did last time. In potential energy, I told you it's an energy which is stored on the virtue because the way it is configured. Maybe you have stretched a spring or you have taken a block up because of the manner in which you have positioned it or configured it or the situation decides the potential energy. And every system when left freely, imagine you leave a ball on the top, it wants to come down. It tries to lower the potential energy and remember everybody wants to be happy and happiness is when you have lower potential energy and sadness is when you have high potential energy you won't like it okay and there are different forms like gravitational you have elastic you have electric you have spring the thing which is common in all of them is that they are all associated with conservative force try and recollect what were conservative forces gravity spring elastic what are these forces? Conservative, meaning the work done in bringing the object back to its original position is zero and the work does not depend on the path. That's what we have seen. Excellent. And potential energy is only defined for conservative. That means you cannot have potential energy for friction or normal because friction normal are non-conservative forces. That means if you push a body and bring it back, Friction won't do zero work. It would have done some work. It would have sucked away some energy from the body. So it is a non-conservative force. And only for conservative forces, you can say the work done by conservative, very important equation is minus delta U. I've explained this equation very clearly last session. Yes, Saja, marking your attendance. Very good, Zayad, very good. Excellente, excellente. Very good. Hello, Anil Kumar. Hello, Rokshna. Hello. Yes, Bunny, even a class 12 student can see this. No problems. If you want to revise your concepts, even a NEET student can see this, even an NDS student can see this. Guys, physics is fun and physics is like a common subject. I mean, you don't have to think, oh, this is J or NEET. No, it's J. Doesn't matter, but you can watch it. Okay. And we have also seen, you also have something called as a reference potential energy. Uh, so you assume zero energy at some position. And when you take a mass up, by height h, the gravitational potential energy is mgh, mgh with respect to that reference. And when you have a spring which is unstretched, the potential energy is assumed, this is the zero reference. The potential energy is assumed to be zero, but when you stretch it, then the potential energy turns out to be half k x square. We have got this inside the class itself. Hello Pushpa, welcome aboard. Yep. So, Let's get going. My God, there are two Chitra Munis. Very interesting. Now, I have a question for you. Let's see how many of you are able to do this. Because today's entire session is all about potential energy graphs. You'll all see maxima and minima. Yes, that's right. You might have heard about maxima and minima probably somewhere. That's what we are going to talk about today. And we are also going to talk about equilibrium. But before that, let's see if you are able to figure out how will the graph of potential energy versus the displacement x look like for a spring mass system, is it A, is it B, is it C, is it D? Interesting question. Come on, my warriors. Let me know. Siva Ganesh, every day 7.30, Shreyas, sir. Remember that. Put it up in your head. Even if you don't see any session on YouTube, remember 99% of the times you're going to find me over here at 7.30. Okay. Come on, come on. Suchi Mama saying D. All right. Uh, glad to know that, Rikhil. Very good. Now, continue our... Um, you know, knowledge boosting series from Nurture. Okay, Sathvivel saying D. Sashank Sastri, I'm very good. Sashank saying B. Interesting. Let's see what the correct answer should be. Yep, okay. So, guys, what should be the correct answer? Thank you, Om Satkute. Option A says Rubalakshmi Selvan. Interesting. 
interesting om saying b well guys the correct answer is not b it's not c as well it is not d as well yep it is a many of you were saying that but many of you also got it wrong reason 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 sir saja is saying c okay fine <laughs> got it so the reason for that i just gave you the formula for spring energy what is the question potential energy what is the potential energy of a spring the potential energy is half k x square x square means quadratic the moment you see quadratic it is a parabola kaun sa bola parabola okay parabola looks u or inverted u but this half k is a positive number the coefficient of the square term is positive so it will be u shaped if half k is negative then it will be inverted u like this but we know k is a positive spring constant half is a positive number positive into positive positive so that's why it should look like this and when x is zero u is also zero substitute the value of x as zero what will you get potential energy as zero so when x is zero energy is zero hence option a is correct that's the right answer i hope you guys got it minus sign won't come gokul remember potential energy stored in a spring is plus half k x square with reference to zero that minus half k x square might come by the work done by the spring that work can be positive or negative that's what i mentioned in one of my previous sessions that guys don't remember whether it is plus or minus see the work done can be positive or negative that's how it is okay chalo you figure it out depending on force and the displacements relative direction okay moving on to the next question coming up on your screen the variation of the potential energy of a particle in space okay it's represented by the following graph what it means is at different different values on the x axis you keep the particle here then here then here and then here you see the potential energy changes just like when you extend the spring the potential energy changes with x so similarly there is some particle whose potential energy changes because of some force or forces and it looks something like this the question is use your common sense and the knowledge from the previous class and probably also the recap how will the particle move if it is released from rest at origin that's the question let's see ankit saying b option i don't know let's see molesh also saying b interesting interesting arjun sarvanan i am very good bacha i hope you guys are doing really well oh and if you have forgotten to smash the like button yeah please if it is gray make it blue and if you have forgot to hit the subscribe button if it is red make it again white or gray yeah do not forget to do that because if you forget then you will miss the next class yeah okay so do not forget to do that very good thanks so oh, okay santoshi glad you have enjoyed enjoyed and you have improved very good santoshi i am so glad and happy for you bachcha proud of you proud of you i hope you get a really good college lot of you are saying a now okay so guys the correct answer is actually a you are right well i'll tell you why you should think about the bhavna you should think about the emotion about potential energy this is high potential energy high means you should immediately make a sad face you should make a sad face and the moment you go down below low potential energy you should be really really happy so if you are here would you like to be sad or would you like to be happy who is that saddest out here who is that who is that saddest who wants to be sad by making his potential energy high? guys you're going to be happy so you're going to move here so that's negative x axis and that's why option a is correct i hope this makes sense okay very good thank you for all your lovely faces now i know how everybody looks suchi mama has two faces isprit has uh, uh, nice uh, what do you say what are those yeah blushes yes and hi evangeline roshni also smiling face streamati also smiling face okay okay very good hello ashita welcome aboard so got it guys let's move on to the next concept 
So now you get an idea that yes, this is how potential energy versus displacement graph looks like. Very good, Srinathi, smiling out there. Okay, now what is this potential energy graph got to do with anything? Hello, Akansha Bacha. See, the reason why we talk about potential energy is because from force you can come to potential energy and from potential energy you can go to force. Not just that, the potential energy graph tells you a lot about the behavior and uh, the response of that system under certain you know conditions it will tell us how it will behave when it is forced in certain manner so you can judge what will be the outcome based on the potential energy graph well a lot of it might not make sense right now but eventually towards the end of the class it will make a lot of sense and you'll be like wow is it this is what potential energy graph does you will understand it so bear through this so let's start with what is the relation between potential energy and force and what is this gradient exactly let's talk about it now last lecture i had mentioned just one second my microphone wire getting stuck oops okay so there we go now last lecture i mentioned about the work the work by a conservative force by conservative force is the negative change in potential energy. Now think about it. Just one second, guys. Oops. Okay, never mind. Now, for a small displacement, I would say the small work done by a conservative force will be a small change in the potential energy with the negative sign everybody understand this as if i move that body by a small amount small displacement there will be a small work done and obviously there will be a small change in the potential energy now here it is what is a symbolic way of writing small work yes it is dw dw is the small work done and what is the small change in the potential energy d u remember u as a symbol for potential energy d u stands for change so d w is the work and d u is the change in the potential energy and we know that the negative sign comes i have explained you why that negative sign comes in my previous class please watch that in case you want to know the complete details of it hello surya shankar welcome aboard hello paulami now what is the definition of work work is force the dot at displacement or force into displacement so in 1d i can just write it as f dx okay so in one dimension i can just write it as force into displacement okay and this will be nothing but minus du therefore what i can do i can just shift that dx over there and i will get f is equal to minus du by dx that's it and this is something which i'm going to block now probably you will try to make sense out of this by thinking ki, okay if i have potential energy i can find force but i need potential energy versus x graph and what is this exactly du by dx well let me talk about it du by dx is called as the gradient gradient of potential okay now let me tell you what is the meaning of the word gradient see when you have a rate of change of position or rate of change of velocity when i say rate of change it is always derivative with respect to time if i say rate of change of momentum it is dp by dt rate of change of velocity dv by dt rate of change of position dx by dt but when i say gradient it means it's derivative but with respect to position so if I say gradient of velocity, it automatically means dv by dx. Gradient of momentum means rate of change of momentum with respect to x. That's all it is. It's a new way of talking about derivatives, but you know what is there in the denominator. So gradient means differentiation with respect to position. If I say just rate of change, then it means with respect to time. Is that now clear guys? Okay, very good. Some of you have already figured this out. This is nothing but the slope of u versus x graph. So, if you have potential energy versus x graph 
and if I were to draw let's say a tangent over here a nice tangent probably like this okay so this is my tangent okay and this will make some angle theta so this will be nothing but tan of theta so it's nothing but the slope of that tangent to the curve at any point okay so that's what gradient is and force is not gradient of potential energy force is the negative of that so if the slope is positive force is negative if the slope is negative force is positive does that make sense yes it does i'll tell you why just imagine if i ask you what is the slope in this half of the curve in this part isn't the slope positive guys isn't the slope over here positive so if the slope is positive that means du by dx is positive if du by dx is positive minus du by dx will be negative so force will be negative force will be negative what does it mean it just means one thing and the thing is when you are here the force is towards the negative side and it is correct because when you take the body here it does not want to increase its potential energy it will be like no boss sorry i want to be happy please take me back to the origin so that's why the force is pushing it towards this side that's what it is again if you bring that body over here in this region the slope obviously is downwards it is negative but the force is minus of minus which is positive that means the force will act in the plus x axis which is this side that means the body won't like it here if you bring it this side it will be like no the force is going to push it it's going to pull it back over here so that's why it's like that i hope that makes sense okay so goro probably one more lecture yes but we might have more problem solving sessions depending on you know how things go yep very good hello tushar understood shrimati very good saja i hope it is clear though so that's what it is so force is the negative of the gradient of the potential that's what it is okay let me put this up so you draw the tangent the slope gives you the gradient and f is minus du by dx as simple as that very very easy now this is okay if you are talking about one dimension this is okay if this is all about you know now uh, one dimension but what if it is two or three dimensions gaurav understand you will have to compare which one is chapter 5 which one is chapter 4 we are not going as per ncert because this is a j channel number 1 number 2 no institute does as per ncert if they are doing it as per ncert then they are fooling you number 3 you have to look at the topic names because in ncert it's all you know scattered everywhere like circular motion is scattered in two chapters vectors is scattered somewhere else so you need to check out accordingly we have done it like with hc verma or how most of the j books will follow okay now hello priyanka welcome aboard uh mangalam yes this is the last topic after this we'll have a problem solving session yes mangalam okay now what if there are more forces in different directions then there is only one thing you need to do see guys we introduced this concept called as partial derivative you have heard about normal derivatives for example if i say derivative of x cube we all know derivative of x cube is nothing but you know 3x square we know derivative of let's say y square with respect to y is nothing but 2 into y okay but imagine i give you this problem derivative of x cube y square with respect to x like wait a minute what the hell is this when i do this then understand this is my function okay this is my function and this function is dependent both on x as well as y but i'm only differentiating it with respect to x i am keeping y as a constant when i do that i will just change the symbol operationally nothing has changed i'll just put this symbol instead of d it is dou it's a, a curve slightly curved d so this is the symbol for partial derivative i'll tell you what it means so when i write this it just means it just means differentiation of that function okay with respect to x keeping keeping 
all other as a constant. That's what it means. So think if y is a constant, it will just come outside. So it will be y square and it will be just derivative of x cube with respect to x. Now that is something which we already know. It is nothing but 3x square. So hence the answer will be y square into 3x square. As simple as that. This is nothing but partial derivatives. EGL it takes some time but just, I, I, it, yeah, just hold on, hold on. Now imagine, I'll give you one more example. Imagine, you know, I ask you what is the partial derivative with respect to y for uh, y plus x cube. Okay, or let's say y square plus x cube. Then it just means you are differentiating with respect to y, keeping everything else constant. So who is constant? x is constant. So just think of this like a constant, like 5, 7, 100, whatever. So what is the derivative of y square? It is 2y and x is a constant. So 2y plus 0, hence the answer is just 2y. As simple as that, that is nothing but partial derivatives. So when you have a function which is dependent on more than one variables, then you can differentiate with respect to each variable, keeping others as constant. Okay, you can similarly write something like this. Imagine derivative with respect to z of x into y square into 3z cube. This means only z is the variable, others are constants. So x and y will be taken outside and you just have to differentiate z, what is it? 3, oh 3 is also constant, so I'll put 3 outside, 3z cube. So z cube's derivative, z cube's derivative is nothing but 3z square. So that's the answer. If you want 3 into 3 is 9. So 9, oops, sorry, what was it? xy square, right? xy square. So 9xy square into z square. That's the answer. I hope that makes sense. Yep. Is that clear? Okay. Yes. Anything apart from the independent variable is considered as constant. Yep. Yep. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Okay. So no, I'm not going to keep those one shot sessions for SANARs. They are in fact detrimental for your health. Like somebody also pointed it out. So it is completely useless conducting seminars class. It's a waste of my time and it's a waste of your time also actually. So that's what this is. So partial derivative of anything, okay, is nothing but keeping everything else constant and only differentiating with respect to that variable. So you can differentiate a function which is a function of x, y, z with respect to x, with respect to y or with respect to z. You will see more about it in a bit. Okay. Now, why are we talking about partial derivatives? Just imagine potential energy is not just a function of x, but let's say it is a function of x and y. Then here is what happens. Just imagine u is equal to um, x square y. Okay, just imagine. Now, when I differentiate u with respect to x, okay, and I get a negative sign over here, what I will get, I'll get force, but this is not any random force. This is only the force in the x-axis because I'm only moving in the x-axis. So when I see myself moving in the x-axis and the potential energy changes in the x-axis, that will happen only because of the forces in the x-axis. So this is as good as saying this is derivative with respect to x of x square y. y is a constant so it will come outside. So it is nothing but derivative uh, of x square with respect to x only. y has come outside so it will be minus y into 2x. That's it. That is the x force. Similarly, the y component will be derivative of the potential energy partially with respect to y alone and just substitute everything with respect to y. So this is x square y. Remember y is a variable, other things are constant. So minus x square into dy by dy. dy by dy is one, so it will be just minus x square. Hence, I got my final answer. The total force will be, this is the x component, this is the y component. So this will be minus 2yx i cap, and this is the j component or y component. So minus x square j cap. That's the final answer. You have got a vector equation. I hope this is clear. Yes. Very good. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Yep. 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 Chitra. HCR Parma is the best book. Yep. I hope this is clear. 
Speedy Santos, I think you just missed uh, yeah, uh, the starting part, but please rewind back. Those of you are joining in late, please rewind back or else you might find it difficult to understand from here because I have covered a lot of concepts, though it's a small part. Please rewind back, you can catch up at 1.5x speed. Okay, so going to the theory now. If potential energy is a function of x, y and z, what I will get is when I differentiate with respect to x, I'll get the x component with the negative sign. If I differentiate with respect to y and I put a negative sign, I'll get the y component. And if I differentiate with respect to z, I'll get the z component. That's why I told you about partial derivatives as simple as that. Okay, Chalo, let's see if you can solve these questions coming up on your screen right now. The potential energy versus displacement graph for a particle is shown. This is potential energy in joules. This is position in meters. You can see the graph changes. Approximately, you can take a scale and see where and all is it maximum, minimum, and what are the values approximately. Each unit over here is 2, 2 meters. Each unit over here is 5, 5 joules. Where is the force on the particle? Zero. Let's see how many of you can do this. Priyanka, uh, I'm not sure what do you mean by weightage of this chapter. There is nothing like weightage of the chapter. It is an important chapter. That's it. It's like what is the weightage of addition or what is the weightage of, uh, I don't know, multiplication or what is the weightage of thirds or what is the weightage of geometry, sir. That you have studied it basics, right? right? And 9th and 10th grade or 8th grade or 2nd grade. So it is useful everywhere. So work power energy will also come in. Magnetism, it will also come in. Electrostatics, it will also come in. 11th standard, it will also come in. Modern physics, so it's there everywhere. Okay, so Anil Kumar, the crash course uh, for 11th standard, well, it's starting very soon on 10th of October. You can register for it even right now. There is a link in the description box. You can check it out. In fact, if you want a slightly more longer course, it's starting this Monday itself. So you can, it's up to you. If you want a slightly longer course, it's starting this, uh, you know, a Monday. And if you want a much shorter course, but then it will be in a hurry. So then you have the option if you are joining in late on 10th of October. Yes, yes, Bopian, it is useful for NEET as well. Okay, Chalo. Yes, yes, I know that, I know that, I understand. I, I see guys, I have been teaching for more than 10 years, so I know what works and what doesn't work, okay? So answer is CB. Come on, my warriors, figure this out. At three points, say Hari Kishore. Uh, well, Suchi Mama, it's not about five joules. Which points are there where you see that the force on the particle is zero? Well, think about it. The answer for this question will come like this because the question is about you know force and what is force? Force is nothing but minus du by dx. Now, if force is zero, du by dx is zero. But what is du by dx? Du by dx is nothing but the slope of u versus x. That means the slope should be zero. If force is zero, du by dx is zero, so slope is zero. So which all points have zero slope? That's like very obvious. This point, if you draw a tangent, this is zero slope. Neither it is going up nor it's going down. This point B over here, zero slope, C point and D point. So all these points over here have zero slope. Hence, all of them will be, yeah, you know, uh, having zero force. So you can get the approximate values if you draw it by scale, probably it will come somewhere around six meters and probably this comes around, uh, what is it, 10 meters. Okay, so 12 and this is 14, so around 14 meters and 16 meters. So those are the answers approximately, but you can also mark the points. That's how it is. Yeah, if force is zero, du by dx is not a constant, Nikhil, that's wrong. U is a constant. If f is zero, du by dx is zero. So u is a constant, get it. Um, yeah, you're right, yeah. Is Vedanta available in PC? Yes, Abhiram. You can watch all our lectures on the paid platform, uh, all right, either through the mobile app or through the tablet or through the PC. The uh, functionalities are similar, so that you won't find, except for the screen size, everything is same. Okay, very good. Okay, now here it is. Next question. The potential energy versus displacement graph for a particle is shown below. What is the force on the particle at 12 meters? Come on, my warriors, do this. And by the way, you will also find my courses on the pro subscription. I'm conducting HC Verma short answers course. No, no website or no book will give you these answers. Number two, I'm conducting derivations of all the chapters, 11 standard chapters for you guys. 
it's already there as a part of pro subscription for free also numerical problem solving for 11th standard it's also there for free and i'm also conducting guys erodo problem solving for higher level problems and higher order thinking for you guys for 11th standard so it's all there for free if you are a part of pro subscription okay uh only mock tests are not available modern man okay hello ajay koteja come on my warriors think about it okay so many of you saying minus 1.73 saja is saying minus 1.73 crash course anil for droppers yes it is there you can join even right now there is a link on my tile standard classes for droppers batch okay so here is what you need to do the question is force on the particle at 12 meters so you can draw this okay and you can see 4 6 8 10 12 this is basically 12 meters so this is nothing but your tangent and that's it so the force will be minus du by dx which is nothing but minus of slope which is nothing but minus of tan 60 and tan 60 is root 3 which is minus 1.732 that's it that is the answer done 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 very good Sushant ah oh, hey, you missed the sign if you do not put minus you will get negative marks so either put minus here or get minus in your marks so that's how it is how do you draw the tangent at 60 selva kumar i did not draw it was already drawn in the figure and that's how it will be in the examination they would have drawn multiple tangents maybe sometimes to confuse you here there was only one tangent drawn and based on that information it should click oh that's a hint so that's how you do it sometimes you might not have a tangent but you might have a straight line graph the graph might be already straight so that time you don't even need the tangent you just need the final value and the initial values to find the slope of it so sometimes when it is not curved they might not give you the tangent they might just give you the values of those points indirectly or directly okay so that's how it is guys the answer is minus 1.73 newtons beautiful perfecto mango understood says nikhil krishna very good suchi mama moving ahead to the next question find find the force for a particle having potential energy given by this equation come on warriors this is very simple very simple so akansha you need to solve hc verma previous year questions tatva module and erodo that's it for advanced okay yes using two point uh, two point form saja correct uh, sorry suji mama yep suji that's very true perfect that's how maths and physics are linked with each other okay so i want to find the force energy is given i know what to do f is minus du by dx so just need to substitute the value of u over here which is this big expression which is x square minus 10x plus 43 okay so this is nothing but derivative of x square is nothing but 2x minus 10 is the constant derivative of x with respect to x is 1 and 43 is a constant derivative of a constant is 0 now don't forget to multiply it with a negative sign so it will be minus 2x plus 10 that is the answer in newton done 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 very good let's see how many of you have answered it oh somebody got it again wrong hurry remember you're always forgetting oh no you put it correctly sorry sorry my bad 10 minus 2x yes roshni that's correct very good nikhil i think you made a sign mistake yes saja that's correct yep very good very good very good so minus 2x plus 10 or 10 minus 2x it's one and the same thing okay beautiful guys proud of you minus 2x plus 10 or 10 minus 2x one and the same answer excellent day now let's see if you can do this multiple variable multiple variable question selva kumar even if you are weak in derivatives don't worry there are two times i have taught derivatives one in my regular sessions you will find it in 1d motion chapter just check 1d motion i have taken two lectures for derivatives two lectures for integration second time i have done a revision of derivatives and integration with more problems so check both the classes it's all there in 1d motion playlist it's there i am pretty sure you'll be able to find it okay salva kumar do that okay anish no problem bacha should i factorize well no not needed pani uh, mayamma sulwai welcome bacha let's do this question now the force on it is you need to find individual forces fx will be minus partial derivative with respect to x that means 20 is a constant 
x is a variable, y is a constant, z is a constant. I'm just differentiating x with respect to x. Oh, x with respect to x is 1. So this will be minus 20y by z. Now, similarly, force in the y direction will be derivative partially with respect to y alone. So y is the variable, everything else like 20, then you have x and z, all are constants, only who is remaining, y is remaining and differentiating with respect to y, dy by dy, that's 1, so minus 20x by z. Lastly, force along z axis will be derivative partially with respect to z, again, except for z, take out everything like minus 20xy and you have derivative with respect to z, uh, this z is below, when you take it up, when you take it up, it will become z raised to minus 1. So it is basically z raised to minus 1. I hope that makes sense. So what is z raised to minus 1's derivative? First, let me write down these constants, which is minus 20xy. Okay, z raised to minus 1's derivative, what is it? Bring that power outside, so minus 1, and reduce the power of z by 1. So z raised to minus 2. So what will it become, guys? It will just become minus minus plus. So 20xy, z raised to minus 2 is nothing but z square. That's it. I have got all the three components. If you want, I can write the total force as minus 20y by z i cap and this is minus 20x by z j cap and this is plus 20xy by z square k cap. That's the final answer. Wow, who is that? Very good, Saja. Proud of you, Bacha. Yes, Remo, now I remember, I remember somebody telling, sir, my name is Remo, yes, I know it, correcto, very good, Roshni, excellent, Cafo, just try to refresh, probably, maybe some problem from the internet, very good, Shashank, excellent, proud of you, proud of you, Bachalok, excellent, uh, will you teach in this topic, no, Susana, I have taught dot, see, that's the problem, you know, with the NCRT, you know, they have screwed it up so much, they have given vector product in rotation. They have taught dot product in uh, <laughs> what to say, man? Like in work, we have taught it already in vectors chapter. Okay, it was already done. So please open my vector session. You will find dot product, vector product, everything. So NCRT does this funny things, and you know, every time any GI aspirant is preparing and they go back, you know, you guys are used to school. If teacher taught, 1.2 topic in class today, you will find exactly the same topic when you go back home till 10th standard. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Everything as it is 1.2 and 1.3 was taught in the class, you find it exactly. In order, next day you know what teacher is going to teach. She is going to teach or he is going to teach 1.4. This is not like that. And it will not be like that when you go to college. It's not like when you go to IIT and NIT. Professor will come 1.1 today, 1.2 tomorrow, 1.3 next day. It's not even like that. Forget that. They won't even tell you books. They'll tell uh, this is the book. This is the book. Refer this topic from this book. Refer that topic from that book. Uh, these are the topics that you need to learn. And here, take this assignment. And you'll be like, wait a minute. What just happened? <laughs> okay. So you guys will be like scared over there. With those puppy eyes, probably water might come out. So, guys, at least I'm not that bad that I'm just telling you, this is a book, this is a book, this is a book, and giving you assignments. No, I'm telling you, okay, these are the concepts. I'm explaining you. I'm solving problems for you. So, don't worry. It's, it happens sometimes. <laughs> okay. Chalo, let's get moving to the next question. And yes, that's correct. Such a beautiful expression. Guys, you can scare your younger brothers and sisters or those young juniors by welcoming them to this class or just taking a screenshot of this with this nice expression but which you solve at ease it was like a piece of cake for you like yeah i know partial derivatives big deal this is derivatives once with respect to x once with respect to y and once with z that's it as simple as that okay so when will you start motion of rigid bodies kumaran it will take few weeks but because i have to start circular then you know all of that um, center of mass collisions it might take a month okay now maxima and minima let's come to that because that's the next part of this chapter 
Yes, Bhargava, I have taught. In fact, almost all the topics are done. Bhargava, this is the fourth class. Next class will be problem solving and uh, tomorrow we have a menti quiz and after that we'll have one more class for just problem solving on multiple concepts. Some more concepts will also be there. You will see that. Okay. But that will be higher level concepts. Okay. Chalo. Oops. That is a good one joke. Good joke, Sara. I love that statement. What is maxima and minima? Maxima means this. When a curve maximizes like a peak. So when you have a graph which peaks out, okay, this is the peak. The peak of a graph is called maxima. Kiskima maxima. Minima is the valley point. The valley is called as minima. Understand that. So what's the difference between maxima and maximum? What is the difference between minima and minimum? Ma and mum means the same thing in English. Ma, mummy, mama. Yeah, but in maths, it's all different. Ma and mum is different. Yep, get that right, kids. So, what's the difference? See, if it goes like this, the graph. Okay, this is ma. This is mum. Yep, that's the difference. We'll be like, what? What just happened? So, guys, this is a maxima, a local, local, yeah, maximum, local greatest value. This is maximum. This is maximum. This is the highest value. That's the difference. Bacterial and bacterium like that. <laughs> okay. So Krishna, it's already scheduled, but you can check it out in upcoming live stream sessions. It's on Saturday. Okay. So maxima is like the local, local Gunda, local Gunda. Who is this? This is International Dawn. Who is it? International Dawn. I love this. this is the maximum, actually the largest value. This is not the largest value. This is the largest value in this local area. That's what it is. I hope that makes sense. Is that clear? Same way it goes for minima. Minima is the local Gunda. Is the local Dawn over here. Okay, is the least value. But if this function goes more below, this is minimum. I hope that makes sense. Now you will never forget. Very good. Excellent. Chalo, bahut hi badiya. Now, is there a way to identify this? Yes, there is. There is. There is a way to identify this. I'm like, sir, what's the way? Please tell me. Is there a way? Mathematically, yes, there is. All you need to do. It will be taught to you in 12th by Shimon sir. And when you join VPro subscription as well. So guys, the condition for maxima is as simple as. First of all, if you draw a tangent, the slope is 0. So obviously, du by dx is 0. But this is the same thing over here also. At minima, if you draw a tangent, if you draw a tangent, what will you get? Du by dx is obviously 0. Or, you know, the slope is zero. The only difference between them, apart from the derivative being zero, is that the second derivative's value. At maxima, if you find the second derivative, that second derivative comes out to be some negative number. When it is maximum, it comes out to be negative. That's the fancy part. And at minima, the second derivative, d square u by dx square comes out to be a positive number. That's all you need to remember. Why it comes out to be positive? Don't worry about it. This will be taught. I'll write in it in bold. This will be taught in maths. Okay, it will be taught in maths. Now just apply. Now just learn the application. That's it. Now just learn what is the application in physics, that's all you need to know. How this comes out positive, negative does not matter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What if the second derivative is zero? Beautiful question, Hari Kishor. There are two possibilities. If the second derivative is zero, well, I know. Okay. So let me just erase this. If the second derivative is zero, then it is neither a maxima nor a minima. In fact, it could be a straight line or a point of inflection. Now, what is this point of inflection? Again, you will learn all of this in maths. 
12th standard not now don't worry about it for now just remember it will be either a straight line or it will be the point of inflection just to give a brief idea a point of inflection is where the curve changes its curvature and this is basically that point of inflection and all of that so don't have to know much about this right now it's okay skip it you will anyways learn that in 12th standard okay that's fine i hope cool so giving you the final criteria for maxima the first derivative is zero the second derivative is negative for minima first derivative has to be zero but the second derivative has to be positive by heart this remember this that's it okay now we'll learn why we need this in today's class because we have not yet probably applied maxima minima okay but probably somewhere in your mind you know what this maxima and minima could mean but you will see the true meaning in a bit let's start some questions yep yep so is my one shot series enough for j mains 2022 anil why do you want to watch one shot now you have a lot of time guys do not watch one shots now it is disastrous to watch one shot now one shot is done at the last moment those last uh, you know those uh, late comers who wake up suddenly sir i did not study anything now i want one shot for them it is fine now you don't have to watch one shot you have time please watch the regular series there are no shortcuts to success remember that okay chalo let's see the questions based on this okay okay come on come on so susana mercy please repeat maxima maxima part is basically where the tangent if you draw the tangent the slope is zero you can see that the slope is zero but if you find the second derivative the second derivative is negative that's it so when it is maxima it is negative when it is minima it is positive you will understand it when i solve problems observe this okay just look at this problem okay uh salva that is wrong i'll give you a thumb rule uh, generally whatever number of lectures i take over here in nurture or pathfinder multiplied by two multiplied by two that should be the bare minimum like the worst case scenario but ideally multiplied by three or four those are the number of days you should take to cover that chapter so if i take five lectures that means you should take 15 days to cover it four will be when you multiply it by four that's the higher extreme you should not go more than that and into two is the lower extreme did you guys get it that's how you need to do it yep yep uh, very much similar Havishka. yep i'm pretty sure if even if you are in isc you will be preparing for je as well now how to solve this question uh well it has a minima okay so it's some graph and i want to find minima and we know the condition for minima is du by dx should be zero this is a must condition this must happen okay so if this must happen therefore derivative okay derivative of what is it x square minus 10x plus 43 well you might be wondering why the hell am i moving my head let me tell you guys lots of lights coming from everywhere and it always keeps reflecting and i cannot see many of the things written on the board although i'm standing very close to the board okay this should be 0 and this will be 2x minus 10 plus 0 because 10 is a constant, x's derivative is 1, 43 is a constant, derivative is 0. Okay, so therefore x is equal to 5. I hope everybody is seeing this. Very good. Now what to do? Okay, now what to do? Now this is the must condition but is not sufficient. For minima, what did I tell you? d square u by dx square okay let's just find out d square u by dx square just figure this out this was the first derivative 2x minus 10 okay this 2x minus 10 okay this was basically your du by dx technically speaking okay so the derivative of this which will be d by dx of the first derivative which is 2x minus 10 is the second derivative so derivative of x is 1 and derivative of constant is 0 so it is 2 this 2 is obviously a positive number that means if there is no other value that is coming that means there is only one and it is positive it is minima one minima and where is that minima that minima is at x is equal to 5 so this graph 
for sure at x is equal to 5 will have a minima over here this is that minima okay this is that minima that's it done 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 nothing great about it is that clear varsha it's on a saturday bacha saturday morning okay you will see it on saturday morning all right very good very good Chal. Now you'll understand more about maxima minima. Well, I just figured it out that it is minima at x is equal to 5. Now, we will take one more question. Now, this question for sure guarantee will clear all your doubts. Observe this question. Another function is given and they have asked where is the maxima and the minima value for this graph or this function. Let's try to do this. What is the must condition? The must condition is du by dx should be 0. Okay, let's try to find a derivative. So d by dx of that function, which is 2x cube minus 15x square plus 36x plus 1. This should be 0. So what is the derivative of this entire thing? So it will be 2 into 3x square minus 15 into 2x plus 36. X's derivative is 1. 1's derivative is 0, is equal to 0. So therefore, what will I get? This is 6x square minus 30x plus 36 is equal to 0. By the way, let me warn you that this much part is nothing but just your du by dx. That's what we have just done. Now, if this is 0, you can just factorize this and all of that. You can, in fact, first of all, divide with 6. So x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. So x square minus, yes, x square minus 3x minus 2x plus 6 is equal to 0. And therefore, I'll get x is equal to either 3 or x is equal to 2. Yep. Okay. Chalo. x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 2. These are the two values that we got. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to, we are going to take these two values and figure out the second derivative. Yeah. Let's try this out. Second derivative, guys. Second derivative of this function, d square u by dx square will be derivative of this one. Just put it over here. So this will be 6x square minus 30x plus 36. Just find the second derivative because for finding maxima and minima, I, I need, I need the second derivative to check whether it is positive or negative. Let's try to do this. Let's see what do we get. So 6x squared derivative is 12x and minus 30x. So just minus 30. This is your second derivative. Now, is it positive or is it negative? How do I know that? Only check for these two values only use for these two values just understand you just need to use it for these two values guys so what you should do is just put the value of x as 3 first and then put the value of x as 2 and then see whether it is positive or negative well if you just put the value of x as 3 12 3 is 36 36 minus 30 so it's basically 12 into 3 minus 30 this will be nothing but plus 6 if you put the value of x as 2, 12 2s are 24. 12 into 2 minus 30, 24. 24 minus 30, that's minus 6. This is negative value. This is positive value. Now, what does it say? Wherever it is positive, it is minima. What is it? It's minima. And when it is negative, it is maxima. So, what does it mean? It just means one thing. At x is equal to 3 you have a minima as simple as that and at x is equal to what is it 2 you have a maxima as simple as that that's it done 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 i hope this is clear is this clear guys yeah so when you get the first derivative as 0 if you get multiple values, you do not know which one is minima, which one is maxima. So that's why you did the second step, second derivative. Then you put both these values here. You will see one of them might be positive, one of them will be negative. Based on that, you will get minima and maxima. 
Now you know the value of x for which you will get minima and value of x which will give you maxima. As simple as that. That's it. Okay. So that's what you need to do. Krishna, I think I just mentioned it, Bacha. Uh, on Saturday, yeah. It's going to be on Saturday morning. Okay. Okay. By the way, if you want to get your doubts cleared, please check out our doubt app where you can chat with our doubt experts so that, you know, all your doubts and all your queries get answered. You can even chat and even you can send your solutions live right from morning till night. And this happens all the days. So please make sure you use the doubt feature out there. Okay. Yes, you can use the quadratic formula, Sulti. But yep, yep, yep. Now, here's the next concept. The thing is, why did we learn all this jargon today? The reason why we learned it today is because of this chapter this topic of this uh, today's session and that is equilibrium and that's a small part and that's what will end our class today equilibrium now whenever we talk about equilibrium you will always remember that yes all the forces will cancel out each other correct exactly so at equilibrium force is zero but did you know that there are three types of equilibrium yes that's right there are three different types of equilibrium and i think somebody has already said Two types now what is the meaning of equilibrium equilibrium means you balance balance means force is zero so let's say I hold this pen like this that means somehow I'm trying to maintain the net force as zero I'm making sure that there are no torques or there are no forces acting on it it's somehow balanced I hold this pen like this it's an equilibrium it's at rest all the forces cancel out each other yes net force only zero in fact torque is also zero but now you have not yet learned about torque I will talk about torque when you learn it in rotation. For now, let's only talk about forces. Let's ignore the rotational aspect of it. Okay, let's just ignore that. Now, what are the three different kinds of equilibrium? I'll just give a very simple demonstration. Look at this. I hold this pen like this. Isn't it an equilibrium? Yes, it is. I hold the pen like this. Okay, I hold the pen like this. Isn't it an equilibrium? Oh uh, yes, it is. I need to be a little bit careful about it because if I move it slightly here and there, it falls down. Okay, this pen was right now at equilibrium for sure. Even this pen was at equilibrium for sure. But if I do this, it comes back. If I do this, it comes back. But over here, when I hold it from bottom, it's at equilibrium. But if I do it, oops, it falls. It's not a great kind of an equilibrium. Now, there is one more kind if I hold it here exactly somewhere at the center. And now, if I do nothing, and if I leave it, no, nothing. I mean, not much happened. So, there are three kinds of equilibrium like you can see over here. So, this one, when I hold it like this and I move it, it comes back. This is called stable equilibrium. It's stable. It stabilizes itself. And when I hold it from below and I do, whoops, that's unstable equilibrium. Okay, that's unstable. It's not at all stable. It's unstable. And when I hold it in between, I do, I do, nothing happens. It just stays there or it just probably moves a little bit. Nothing. It's like indifferent. So it's a neutral equilibrium. So those are the three kinds of equilibrium that you get. And that's what we're going to see. Okay, so don't worry, we are going to see all these kinds. So the net force acting on the object must be zero. Therefore, all the forces balanced in all the directions. So this guy is in equilibrium, he's trying to balance all the forces. There are three equilibriums, stable, unstable and neutral. We are going to see each one of them. Now, this is a very good example of unstable equilibrium. You have a ball, on that you have some uh, books or I don't know, some objects. On that a ladder and you are standing on top of that. You might be balancing yourself, but only you know how difficult it is to do such a thing. Never try this at home. I should have put up a warning. So guys, do not try this out at home because this is highly unstable equilibrium. Already people are getting tense looking at that guy over there. So what is happening is that if you look at it from the potential energy perspective, you will get it very clearly. The energy is at its maximum. Correct. The potential energy is maximum. Over here, if you draw a tangent, the slope is zero. If slope is zero, du by dx is zero. If du by dx is zero, force is zero. But look at this. Even if you move 
slightly here or slightly here, you will become more happy, right? Won't you become happy, guys? Why? Because you have low potential energy. So you will try to go away from it, either this side or this side on even a small disturbance. So a small disturbance will throw that system out of the equilibrium. That's why it's unstable equilibrium. Yep, you will fall down with your hands and legs broken. So what kind of a point is this quickly? Let me know. Is this a maxima or a minima? Come on, my warriors. Is it a maxima or a minima? Is it maxima or a minima? Oh my God, Saja tried this while searching for chocolates in your kitchen. Saja, I hope you are all fine. Okay, so it is a maxima. Correcto. It is a maxima. Now you understand why we learnt maxima in the first place. Yes, so this happens when the body does not return to its original position but moves further away from it because it sees the joy of low potential energy. Remember this statement. So maxima is unstable equilibrium. Okay, another example. Now this is for stable equilibrium. This is a pendulum. I move it slightly here, it comes back. I move it slightly here, it comes back. Why is it behaving like that? It's in stable equilibrium. It stabilized itself because if you look at it, you know, it tries to come back to its original uh, position when it is disturbed from its equilibrium. That's a good equilibrium. And on the graph, it will be this point over here. If you're wondering why is it this point, think because if you try to move it away from here, either this way or this way, then it's going to yeah, become sad because the potential energy, the potential energy increases. So it tries to lower its potential energy by coming back over here. So when you move this pendulum here, gravity potential energy increases. It increases even the here. So it will try to lower its potential energy by coming back. So that's why this is stable equilibrium and we can guess this is obviously the point of minima. That's why you learned all about minima. Very good. Yes. I hope this makes sense. Yes, Zayab, your messages are visible, Vacha. Very good. Excellent. So, stable equilibrium is the point of minima. Another example that you can think of is a spring mass system. If you displace the spring, it will try to come back to its original position. That is the stable equilibrium position. Okay. Very good. Now, next, neutral equilibrium. Janeshwar, I will try, probably try to finish it by January or something. That's a decent time because you guys have started very late. You guys passed out of 10th, you know, very late. So things have to also get shifted. So by around January time, it should be a good time to finish 11th standard. Neutral. Look at this ball. You keep it here, here, here. Doesn't matter. There is no joy. There is no happiness everywhere. It's searching for joy and happiness uh, or sadness. Nowhere. It's the same thing because it's at the same height. So if you keep a pen here or here or here, doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So that's neutral equilibrium. So that on the graph will be this region where the potential energy remains constant. What did I say? Potential energy remains constant. That is the region of neutral equilibrium. Okay, now keep this in mind. One more thing, unstable equilibrium is the point, point of maxima correct and stable equilibrium is the point of minima but this is very very important neutral equilibrium is not a point but a region where potential energy is constant very very important Pot neutral is always a region it is not a point nobody knows this yeah, yeah, zero for, it's not zero, it's constant. Please get this statement correct. Potential energy should be constant for many, many points. Only then it is said to be a neutral equilibrium. Thank you, Chitra Bacha. Okay, shall we do some questions based on this? Here it is. Let's see if you can answer this question. Come on, my warriors. In equilibrium position, the body must have, what should it have, guys? Come on, quickly. In equilibrium position, a body must have, what should it have? Think, think, think. It is very easy. Very good, Saja. Very good, Zayed. 
come on suchi mam also understood zayed saying d okay maximum potential energy minimum potential energy minimum kinetic energy potential energy gradient is zero okay very good many of you got it correct shrimati no bachcha it is not d it is d okay yes it is d i just told you equilibrium means equilibrium means force is zero if force is zero minus du by dx is zero and what is du by dx that is energy gradient that's it so that's the answer energy gradient is zero that's it next question coming up on your screen now beautiful dakshin beautiful sashank very good hari kishor let's see the next question potential energy graph is given as shown over here in the figure the particle can attain stable equilibrium at which of these points which is a point of stable equilibrium come on my warriors figure this out there is only one point is it uh, okay a lot of you are saying c c for chennai c for calcutta c for coimbatore okay c for calicut okay cool amazing go it is actually c very good proud of me my warriors c for capto 2 yes it's c for capto shreya c for csk correcto next question coming up on your screen it slightly changed where can it attain unstable equilibrium unstable equilibrium yes that's right chaitra all right come on come on where can it attain unstable equilibrium come on my warriors this is very very easy c for computer science says anil kumar my god think about think something apart from computer science bachcha log oh my god you guys just dream about it no it is not b uh, b for bombay e for elephant d for donkey a no there is only one point shrimati c for chemistry b for bangalore no 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 guys it is e for elephant it is e for elephant oh you guys meant a option oops my bad why the hell is okay b for b c for c d for d e for f and a for e very interesting great <laughs> we'll look at the options okay now some of you will be like sir we meant option a sir somebody like why is it like this okay i don't know okay so it's our option e because this is the maxima point maxima is unstable equilibrium fair enough moving on to the next question coming up on your screen all right so what do we have the energy equation the question is force at 3 meters and the question is what is the force when is the force zero and what kind of equilibrium it is let's take it step by step that's better because u is given how about just finding out du by dx first okay just find out du by dx so du by dx will be d by dx of this guy which is x square minus 2x so therefore du by dx will be 2x minus 2 fine let's also find out d square uh, u by dx square so now d square u by dx square will be nothing but the derivative of this guy which is 2x minus 2 so therefore the second derivative will be uh, well that's 2 x is derivative is 1 minus 2 is a constant so 0 so that will be just 2 fair enough okay i'll just keep it aside now let's think about it find the force what is force force is minus du by dx that means it is minus du by dx is 2x minus 2 so 2x minus 2 but the question is the force at 3 meters so substitute the value of x as 3 so we'll get minus of 2 into 3 minus 2 okay so this will become 2 3 is a 6 6 minus 2 4 so it will become minus 4 newton so that's the force at 3 meters that's your first answer fair enough next question at what point is the force on the particle zero force is zero that means this term is zero so minus 2x minus 2 is zero therefore 2x minus 2 is zero therefore 2x is equal to 2 therefore x is equal to 1 meter dun 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 so at x equal to 1 meter the force is zero and what is force is equal to zero mean it is at equilibrium it is at equilibrium at this particular point fair enough but what kind of equilibrium is this 
Yes, this is what kind of equilibrium? Oh, check the second derivative. The second derivative will give the answer. The second derivative 2 is a positive number. If it is a positive number, it has to be a minima. It has to be a minima. So at x is equal to 1, okay, you will get a minima. You will get on the x-axis, okay, this is at x is equal to 1, a minima. And minima means, obviously guys, it's a stable equilibrium. Done, done, done. Yes, second derivative test. That's it. That's what equilibrium and potential energy curves is all about. So it's got little bit of derivatives and calculus concept of slopes, obviously, and um, the concept of potential energy, which you have studied in the previous class. Done, done, done. So all of this is there. And now this is your homework question. Put up your answers in the comment section. I'll read up all the names next class. Tomorrow we have a menti quiz. Do not forget that. This is the next question for homework. Yes, solve this, put it up. I'll be reading the names next class. And guys, yes, the pro subscription is available. Yes, I have personal classes, Satvika. Uh, I have the micro course for HC Verma. I have the numerical problem solving, problem solving from every chapter. HC Verma discussion of all the chapters. Okay, these are called as the micro courses. Plus, Erodo course, plus derivations of all the chapters for 11th standard again. So it's all there. Where you need to check is simple. Go to our yeah our page you might be watching our video right now just go below and uh, my god there are some crazy links out here you have cbsc grade uh, you know syllabus coverage also over here so if you want you can take up the two years j it also includes cbsc and other things it's inbuilt so uh, you can go down you can see this is the price for two years it's not a one year price total price yes guys you heard this right I'm pretty sure many of the offline coaching institutes installment will be this. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Check it out in Kota and others. The total price for two years is like around 4 lakhs, 3 lakhs around say. This might be the first installment or second installment price. So you can see this is a two year price and you just have to pay, you know, guess what? 3000 rupees a month. Oops. And you can even try for 2700 for a month. That's like crazy. Yeah. So if you want more features like doubt solving and all of that, then you can go to the higher packages. This is the one with personal mentorship. So that's the most exclusive package, which is very good, the personal mentorship. Some people opt for that. Most of the people go for this. Okay, so you can try it out. You can find me over there. I will be, I will be very eagerly waiting to see all of you out there. And plus amazing master teachers. There are batches in English too. Yes, Vedantu has probably one of the very few institutes in the country which has a lot of English batches along with the Hindi batches separate and uh, thank you guys for tuning in bye bye Chatra, bye bye Satvika, bye bye Susana Marsi, Zayad, Sashank, uh, so, um, take care Suchi Mama, have a great time Chitra, yes bye bye Anil Kumar, take care Kavita, bye bye Hari, yes you can, uh, well my batches you can join my micro courses but the regular batches you will have some other teachers as well, so Sashank just use this link bacha you have to go through go below in our video just go below there is this link you can see that j2 years vedantu pro subscription click that you will see this course page okay and you can use your debit card paytm whatever you have and you can join using that okay i hope sashant that is clear all right take care bye bye this was Shreyas here and i was going live from bangalore aslav vista